Welcome back, everybody. With all eyes on Kenosha, Wisconsin, as we eagerly await a verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse as the jury enters into another day of deliberations, we want to understand what is the latest that is happening there. So we go right now live to our very own Anjanette Levy, who is outside in outside this courthouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Anjanette, it's good to see you. Good morning. Walk us through what the latest is. What do we know? Hey, good morning to you, Jesse. We can tell you that the jury is supposed to return here at about 9 central time to resume those deliberations. They've deliberated for now about 24 hours, give or take, you know, maybe a half hour or so. And we don't really know what's going on in that jury room. We know, obviously, they are still in discussions. And, you know, we don't know if they're close to a verdict at all. We don't know if they're hung. Uh, Mark Richards, the defense attorney for Kyle Rittenhouse, was quoted as telling some reporters yesterday after the jury was sent home for the day that he thought they were hung six to six. But just like everyone else, he's speculating, although he's been in courtrooms and done many, many trials uh, over his long career. So we know they're returning to the courthouse this morning to continue the deliberations. This will be day four of verdict watch in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, something interesting happened. A lot of interesting things have been happening here in this trial, and one of those things happened yesterday afternoon when the judge brought the jurors in to send them home for the evening. They wanted to go home for the night. Uh, one of the jurors asked the judge if she could take the jury instructions home with her for the night. So we want to show you a little bit uh, of how that whole exchange unfolded. The record will reflect that when I asked, uh, when the juror inquired if, they, if she could take the instructions home, which also means can they take the instructions home, uh, I didn't see reaction from the state side. I did see a wag of the head by Mr. Richards uh, urging me to say no, but I did it anyway. So, did you want to make a record on it? I just, I'm afraid it's going to be the old dictionary game and they start defining words and things like that, the outside research. Yeah. That's my concern. Well, actually, no, because they could do that at home without having the paperwork and instead they have the wonderful, concise jury instructions. Uh, that uh, I've, I, I have to say, you know, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I watch a little TV in, in, in the morning and in the evening, and some of the greatest legal minds in the country, I'm delighted to say, agree with us that the instructions are very confusing. But um, um, John, so, the only, the only thing I would say yeah. is um, I don't think it would be appropriate for, the, for them to bring their notes home. No, you're right about that. No notes to go home. That's correct. So no notes to go home, but the, they may take their instructions. So there you have it. Judge Schrader allowed the juror, or maybe more than one juror, wanted to take the jury instructions home for the evening. There are 36 pages. The first six pages deal with the definition of self-defense and, and provocation. The remainder, remaining jury instructions go over other portions uh, that the jury are su supposed to consider. So uh, they were allowed to take the jury instructions home with them. They were told not to discuss them with anyone, but you have to think that at least that one juror was doing a lot of reading last night. Jesse. Uh, and look, you know, it's Friday. We always wonder, will a jury come back with a decision before the weekend? Uh, maybe that's a possibility. Right. Um, you know, it's really impossible to know. But I, I'll tell you what we do know. You know, Ann Jeanette, last time we spoke, you were talking to us about these protests that were happening outside, these kind of violent altercations yeah. that were happening outside the courthouse. Walk me through what the scene was like last night, what the scene is like today. Well, today, you know, I want to show you just, well, briefly, I don't know, there's maybe like two or three people over there on the steps right now. They don't usually come and start, you know, getting going until about 9.30 central, 10 o'clock central, somewhere in there. So it's still a little bit early. Court hasn't resumed just yet. Uh, there were two people arrested on Wednesday for fighting. Yesterday, a man was arrested. We have some video of that, actually. A man came here to the courthouse with a gun. He also had a knife. And th across the park from where I'm standing, there's a school. And you can't have a gun within a 1,000 feet of a school. So that man was taken away um, with his gun, put in a police van, uh, whisked away, and then apparently uh, cited and released. So there have been a few people who've brought firearms here to the courthouse. And uh, they were told, you know, get, get that out of here. But this guy was actually taken away and cited for it. So uh, no fights yesterday, though. So that was a good thing.
um, yeah. no fights, people uh, standing on the steps. Jesse, I think it's so interesting to watch, you know, people who are wanting a conviction in this case, standing on one side of the courthouse steps, along with the Kyle Rittenhouse supporters on the other, and they have like dueling bullhorns and they're screaming at each other. And uh, this one lady yesterday said, Kyle is a murderer, Kyle is a murderer. While this other guy is saying, protect our second amendment rights, Kyle's a hero. So it was, you know, first amendment, you know, the public square, you know, right there on display uh, on the courthouse steps. Yeah, and just Jesse, for... can I show you something? Yes, please, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, it's not all bad news out here. Uh, you know, the people in Kenosha, I must tell you, have been very kind. I know they're probably growing weary of all this media attention and everything, uh, but there have been a lot of kind gestures that we've seen around the courthouse. Uh, yesterday, the sheriff brought some cookies out. Well, this morning, I want to take you over and introduce you to a couple of gentlemen who are here. Uh, these are Rabbis Solly and Rabbi Stein. And look at this. They came here this morning with cookies and coffee. So we have day two of cookies and coffee here at the Kenosha County Courthouse. And uh, rabbis, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to talk with me this morning. Um, you can, uh, either one of you can answer this question. Uh, what prompted you to do this? So we run a local nonprofit organization that employs adults with special needs and we have a cafe mm -hmm. and our participants said, you guys are out here in the cold, let's bring you some warmth. Um, I'm here also with a rabbi from Kenosha to help pray for the peace, and we're just here to share some share some friendship. I, I think that's really wonderful, and I, I think you know, among you know, with all the shouting and the yelling and the seriousness, it, it's nice to see some um, some kind things going on. Uh, Rabbi Solly, uh, what do you, you live here? What what do you feel the mood is in this community right now? I think the mood really is people just want calm and want peace, and just want um, friendship really more than anything. People just want people to get along and be. You know, hold the peace, really. That's more than anything. Yeah. Uh, and how, how do you th think this has changed the community over the last, uh, you know, 14, 15 months? I think a lot of people got to know each other, really. A lot of the neighbors, and in my, my subdivision where I was, where I live, um, all the neighbors came out, during, certainly during that entire week. There was some tension, which, you know, brings concerns. Everyone was outside. I met all my neighbors over that time. We even had a... Um, uh, in a certain sense, our subdivision got a, a you know a Facebook group just for our own community, a text group for each other, just caring about each other. I think it actually did bring people together in a sense, also, in a in a human way, which I don't think people realize. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much for talking with us. A, a really kind gesture here, um, and I might top off when we, I get done here with uh, our live shot. So, uh, Jesse, uh, just a really nice thing that's going on here among you know all the. You know, this is a very heavy thing. You know, you've got an 18 year old kid um, accused of some very serious crimes, accused of homicide. And, you know, two men died, another was wounded. So this is incredibly serious. It doesn't get more serious than this, that it's, it's nice to just see something um, kind of beautiful like this happening uh, among all of the other things going on. And Jeanette, can you do me a favor? Can you tell them they're doing a mitzvah? <laughs> I, uh, Jesse Weber, our, our host, wants me to tell you you're doing a mitzvah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, perfect. They right. said, said perfect. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. Could be, right. could be one of my favorite moments on no, law and crime here. that we've ever had. So, uh, Anjanette Levy, thank you so much. A ray of sunshine in some really difficult times. But really, thank you so much for your reporting, as always. And we're going to check back in with you later on. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. It was the video that shocked the nation. An unarmed black jogger, 25-year-old Ahmad Aubrey, gunned down in broad daylight. The three men charged will now stand trial. For live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the trial, subscribe to Law & Crime on YouTube TV today.